Good morning, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens, I'm in Shigatse, which is one of the major cities and major areas of Tibet uh, with Travel China and Tibet Tours. Today we are gonna go on a food tour, a local Shigatse Tibetan food tour. Uh, we're gonna eat some of the local specialty food and some street food and some meals. And then we're also gonna visit the Shigatse Zong, which is one of the main uh, landmarks of Shigatse. So we're getting started in the old town of Shigatse. We're gonna first try to find a family and have some local Tibetan breakfast. found a small little local family-run Tibetan tea house uh, where they serve traditional Tibetan breakfast. So we're gonna stop in here, we're gonna have a little bite to eat to get the day started and some butter tea. Here go. Okay, come on inside of here. Oh, cool. Very cozy little like, it's almost like a little dining room, like a little family sitting room. Thank you. And the family who owns this tea house said we can go to the top of the roof. Whoa, cool. To get a view of the city as well. And it opens up into like a sunny patio, but enclosed patio. With plants, with cactus. Oh, dry cheese. Mm -hmm. So it's a fresh, yeah, butter. Didn't know about that. And that's butter tea? Yes. What? <laughs> Zampa is the roasted uh, Tibetan black barley, which is a staple. Um, but for breakfast, it's almost impossible to find this at a restaurant. They only everybody eats this at home, and so yeah, it's very hard to find at restaurants. So this is, I mean, this is a tea house, but very very local, and this is their home. So I don't even think. They might not even serve this at the tea house, but we were in their house, and so they uh, offered to make this for us because this is what we wanted to eat for breakfast. Oh, she's making them into big dumplings. First took some of the sampa flour, which is the, the roasted barley flour, and then mixed in a little bit of yak cheese and some, that's sugar, right? He mixed in some sugar as well, as well as like an entire block of zumo butter. And zumo is the cross between a yak and a cow, so that's like also one of the most common types of, of butter. Uh, so then you mix that in, and then they put it into this little like skin, it usually is like a yak skin pouch, but I think this one might be cloth. Uh, anyway, you really massage that in like a like a he really worked it worked that butter because it's all cold Work that butter into the flour into the other ingredients and she really like squeeze it almost like in that pouch She almost like wrings it like a towel to make these really tight tight kind of like dough kind of like dough dumplings of uncooked bread kind of uh, and then that is it does not get more local than that for Tibetan breakfast. The simplicity, yet the process. And yeah, you can see that it's like, it's solid because she literally, like a towel, wrings it out with that dough. Wow, that sampa, it is thick. It is hearty. Yeah, it's buttery too. But you can't, the, the cheese just gives like a mild taste to it. The sugar, is because the sugar is so coarse, you kind of almost crunch on the sugar, but just a light sweetness to balance. Not, not very sweet. It's like that uncooked dough, so it sort of like sticks to the roof of your mouth a little bit. You need to, I think, drink butter tea along with it. But well, that's good. That is, that is a real Tibetan, like highland, high elevation food. That's for sure. You can just sense it. This, this, this. And then we drink. Ah. 
So three times? Yes, three times. And the finger should be this. this. Out. The finger. And like this? Thumb, thumb out. Thumb out, just this Only finger. This. So this is what um, Domo was saying is you traditionally you kind of flick it out? Yes, put in. Put it in the butter tea? Use the thumb. Use the thumb. Offering. First, okay. Then One. Two. two. And then three. Yes. And now we can drink the butter tea. Oh, I love the butter tea. Oh, that one is good. Oh, that's rich and creamy and salty and soupy. Uncle just went downstairs and he brought us some of the chili sauce to eat with the sampa. Um, and yeah, it includes the dried chili, which they mash into a, a paste. And then shawantage, shawantage, yeah. which is a herb from the mountains. That's also included in there. No idea what the, it almost looks like pine needles. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add that. Add a little bit of this. Oh, tomas is. Oh, is it really on my? <laughs> spicy? Sure? Really spicy? Sure? Yes. Mmm. <laughs> really hot. Mmm. All that flavor, though. It's like the dry chili. No, oh, that herb. It does taste kind of like evergreen tree a little bit. <laughs> And then at the same time, it's kind of, what could that herb be? It smells like a pine tree. I'm loving it. What a combination, yeah, because that chili and the evergreen. Yeah, okay, you gotta chase with butter tea because that kind of sticks to your mouth. The butter and the sampa. Wow. That chili sauce just like, that bumps it up. That chili sauce is just amazing. Oh. And like the crumbliness of it. Oh. That is like the carbohydrates and fat that you need in the morning in Tibet. Mm. And wash it down. Well, that was good. I had just two of those Sampa dumplings. Those are heavy. That's like the ultimate power granola bar Tibetan breakfast. It's like, it literally is like, I mean, a solid lump of just flour and butter that's just gonna rise in your stomach. Um, and I, had, I washed that down with at least three cups of butter tea. I'm feeling like I have energy to, to conquer this high altitude. We are on our way to explore more of uh, Shigatsi. Okay, so right at the base, we made it to the base of the Zong, but right at the base of the Zong, there's a local market. Um, lots and lots of fresh, actually kind of like half dried meat. Um, these are sheep. They're actually at this market, it's mostly sheep. Hello. Uh, but then there's some yak meat as well, and now moving into some more like, these are not, um, souvenirs, but they're more like uh, religious symbols and religious uh, prayer beads and bells and things that, that people use. Yeah, so all sorts of daily necessities at this market from wooden bowls for butter tea to nail clippers to um, Tibetan shoes to jewelry to food. Okay, we're stopping. Uh, this man is on a kind of a motorbike cart and he has this big pot of this it's made from beans as well as oil do you know what type of beans it is uh, he said it's a kind of bean which is a black color oh like a and type of black color white. beans and then he made makes this like huge pan of this kind of like wiggly wiggly thing and then he slices it off into a bag and then you add chili sauce these are some massive chunks massive slices in these little toothpicks well that's a little 
That is a little wobbly. I think I'm gonna have to... Okay, here's a smaller piece. There we go. This is one of those times where you hope to get it to your mouth before it falls out of the tooth. Mmm. It's jiggly. A little bit starchy. But really light and blobby and then you have that chili sauce. Mm, that makes it tasty. It's kind of like a, yeah, you know, like a bean jelly. It looks like a lot, but you could definitely eat it all because it's very light. Oh. <laughs> I tried to take a bite and it just, it just slid out of my mouth. It's, it's jello-y, that's for sure. I think there might be some spring onions in there as well. take back the, the lightness factor. It's light at first, but it gets heavy. Um, that was a good little snack. And we're now moving on to the main monastery of Shigatsu, where we're gonna do a little hike above the monastery. We're beginning the hike now through the alley, but we're gonna go up the mountain. And this monastery, it is, it's huge. It's sprawling. Uh, We'll learn more about it as we continue to go up. But again, just a reminder, make sure you wear sunglasses, make sure you wear your hat. I'm even wearing my hood a little bit to, to block the sun because this sun, like literally if you, you can just feel the sun like bubbling. You feel blisters forming on your skin that touches the sun because it's so strong. It's so harsh, even if it's cold. This is yak hair. And then right behind me, then this is the, the first stupa. And then there's almost prayer wheels kind of going all the way up and we're gonna you can just see in the mountains as well you can see the prayer flags just like covering especially from peak to peak yeah it's a very good thing I ate those that breakfast that sampa that's what's and the butter tea that's what's powering me now and we're getting up Closer to the top of the monastery, I believe. I think we made it to the top here. Um, there's kind of a rocky area and this is like the back side of the wall of the monastery. So maybe not really a view of the monastery from here, but we'll get another view, maybe from the other side or from below. But it was very cool to just walk around, walk around it. But we say, Sasho, Masho, Sasho. Barley, Sasho, come salt. Masho, come butter. Ah. So most people yes, uh, mash it a little bit. Yeah, uh, we, see, we believe that yeah, so you know, uh, salt, butter, tea will come more. Ah. So we believe in every people, every local people when they come here, they do like this. Okay. okay, and here we go at the top here. This is the view over the entire monastery. It is huge and vast and just like covers the entire, almost like amphitheater basin of the mountain and the rock. Wow, there's so many buildings. Wow, and just surrounded by the plateau. So we made it down from the hike and before we go into the monastery, because the monastery is still closed, I believe for lunch, we're gonna have lunch ourselves. We're stopping at a restaurant here. Tibetan restaurant. Oh yeah, that's the yak, yak wool blanket. That's heavy. Come on inside. Wow, a big Tibetan restaurant. Well, like a big family restaurant. Nice, I'm loving it in here already. The natural light, the sofas, the colors. The colors as always. And not forgetting the Tibetan sofa dining situation as always as well. These are like bucket seats. We just ordered up some of this uh, restaurant's Tibetan food specialties, some of their very meaty specialties, and they are now really bumping that, that um, karaoke. 
So two of the main meat dishes have arrived. One is a sausage that's made from the sheep intestines and then filled with sampa, which is the, we've already had some today, but it was just the Tibetan roasted barley. And so that looks very hearty. That's like more than just a sausage. That's an all carb meat intestine roll up all in one. And then another dish that I haven't tried so far, Tibetan food that's very popular, is sheep lungs, fried sheep lungs. And it's kind of fried down with some peppers and some onions and kind of like bubbly. That looks really good. And some chili sauce to go with it. Have to begin with that sausage. Look at, you can just see actually the, the grains of the barley. That has some texture to it, some grainy texture and then just wrapped up in sheep intestines. It's almost like bread. Mmm. Yeah, it is like bread. But like wrapped in intestines with a bit of a irony meaty taste to it. That really is a lot of sampa though. A lot of barley. So then, I'm not sure if it's fried, but then it kind of just like, turns into like crumbly meat bread. That's good. It'd be even better with some chili sauce, but we gotta try those lungs first. Okay, next up for the fried sheep lungs. Mmm. Oh, that's incredible. Oh yeah. Like it's, it's a little irony tasting. A little sheepy, but like the texture is wonderful. It's a little bit, not rubbery at all. Very soft, very tender. Has that fried crust around it. And then kind of, yeah, kind of like a, actually a very soft texture. A very soft texture. I mean, it has a lung texture, that's for sure. Oh, cool. This is the one. This is like one of the main dishes we wanted to try here in Shigatsu, which is the Shigatsu Shapale. Shapale. Oh, this one is a Shapato? Shapale. Shapale, which is like a fried dough with a yak. With, with yak inside, definitely yak inside, and that is puffy and fried. That looks so crispy. Okay, we got a few more dishes that I didn't even realize were coming. Dolma hooked it up. Yeah, it's yak meat. Is it, I think it's radish. And then the little, oh yeah, these are small little guys. Filled with yak as well. Oh, They're sliders, slippery. Mmm. Well, it like juices with yak. Um, it has some kind of a herb inside of it. Kind of tastes like that mountain herb that was in that chili sauce. Like kind of, kind of evergreen. Mm. And I think these little dumplings would be, would be really good dipped in the chili sauce. Very slippery. You kind of got to scoop them, but if you want to dip, you got to make sure you have a firm, a firm grip, or maybe I'll just, like, actually just stick it into the chili sauce. Mm. Oh, that chili sauce, that makes it, that's so good. It's like, it's like a, not, th not even that salty, but a nice, just a nice chili sauce. Okay, and then this one is the chapale, the fried bread. I'm gonna maybe break it in, break it in half. Okay, that's kind of oily. The yak juices are flowing. Oh, and there's minced yak in the inside, okay. Maybe break it, break another piece off. You can kind of feel the, the oil squeezing out of it. Mm. Kind of like a chewy bread, but it's thicker in some areas because of that rivet. And it is kind of oily, kind of tasty, it would be good. Maybe I'll try some of that tomato sauce with it. And that yak meat inside of the chapelet is almost kind of like caramelized. tomato sauce. It's like really vibrantly, really tangy. Then with a the meatiness to it, the yak meat in there. But that's like, yeah, uh, very simple. Just tastes like pureed tomato. Okay, this is a big, this is a big bite of sheep, sheep sampa. With their chili sauce. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it really is. It just crumbles like a, like a, what is that? type of bread called um that kind of like darkish bread like a um like a rye bread it's like a a sheep rye bread mm. that is like filling though definitely a lot of animal tastes in this meal from the lungs to the to the sheep to the yak it's a good though it's like wow 
This food will fill you up fast. Chase that with a with a lung or two. And then you've got the full sheep texture in your mouth at once. Oh, wow. Again, this is the point in the meal where you, you need to lean back and fully utilize the Tibetan sofa seating. That dough is starting to rise in my stomach, expanding. The lungs, too. Oh, that was, that was a rich meal. Oh, wow. Finished with lunch. That was a very, very heavy lunch. And now we are at the monastery. The monastery is called Tashi Lumpo Monastery. And from what I understand, this is the seat of the second after the Dalai Lama. And so there's, uh, it's an entire complex of students, of uh, places, of chapels, of assembly halls, of chapels, of tombs. And yeah, as we saw already, it just stretches through the entire kind of like basin of the mountain. And so we're going to walk around, we're going to tour around the monastery now. And Dolma mentioned that it is the winter palace of the penchant Lama. So most of the bottom level of the monastery are monks accommodation and students housing. So all of the, most of the bottom rooms and buildings and alleys are, yeah, like living quarters. But we're continuing up to some of the some of the other assembly halls, I think, in places. This is a very cool type of tree with branches, and look at this stump. But the unique thing about it is it only grows over 4,000 meters, and I think we're right at 4,000 meters here. And we are stepping into a chapel where there, I believe, is a huge, okay, a huge statue of Buddha. 270 kilos of gold, 79 kilos of gold, 230,000 kilos of copper. Okay, and no photos or videos inside, but this is just the entrance. Entrance way. Wow, that was huge, massive. Okay, moving on. Next, we're stepping into the 10th Pension Lama's tomb stupa. Wow, this is impressive. Step through the, the entryway and then it's like multi-layered tiers and this is with the golden roof and so much, maybe copper, which is reflecting off the sun. Mainly, we're visiting a lot of the tomb stupas. So this is of the fourth pension lama. And go up this. These are cool staircases. Okay, this is where the current pension lama lives. This is his palace during the winter, especially. And what's interesting about this to me is that on the bottom, the ground floor, is the grain barley storage like all of it. We're standing on the grain barley storage, which there's ladders, steps that go down, but then there's also, if you walk, you hear your feet really stick because they put yak butter on this entire floor to make it very non, very, very slip proof, uh, very sticky. You can hear that on your shoes. And that's going to wrap up this Tibetan food tour of Shigatse as well as visiting the monastery and walking around, hiking around. It was another amazing day. Um, and actually, this is going to, this is the final video. This is going to wrap up this entire Tibetan food and travel video series. If you haven't seen all the videos, I'll have the link in the description box below. But from Lhasa to Yamdrak Lake uh, to Shigatse, uh, be sure to check out all of the videos, watch all of the videos. Tibet has been just exceeded my expectations in terms of people, culture, the beauty, the natural scenery, the people. I said that again, but that deserves twice and the food. But the people are so cool. They, this environment, this altitude, it's, it really is not an easy life, especially in the countryside. They're such amazing people. And to me, what stands out about the food the most is 
uh, eating at people's homes. The restaurants, they're, they're good, they're okay, but the real beauty of Tibetan food and culture is at people's homes. Uh, that's where the best food is, that's where the traditional food is, and that's what I will remember the most, that stands out the most about this trip to Tibet. Uh, so yeah, I wanna say, a huge thank you to Travel China Tibet. Uh, they invited me to Tibet. You need to be on a tour. And they invited me to Tibet. They organized everything. They really, to me, they, they really, exactly what I wanted to do because I wanted to learn about the culture. I wanted to go to people's homes and they, they catered perfectly to that. So a huge thank you. I will have their link in the description box. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Q and Doma for guiding us around. Uh, but it was, Really an honor to have a chance to visit Tibet and truly the rooftop of the world, and it is. Wow. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video series. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. I'm going to be publishing lots more food and travel videos and also turn on your bell icon. Click the bell icon. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Shigatse, Tibet. I'll see you on the next video.